continuing now with the ICOM ICB1050 2781CB radio. Right, we've covered the VCO in the last video, now we're going to move on to the transmitter. Now, as I mentioned, I set this was a really a scrap set that I resurrected, and um, so everything has been set up on the coils. But I will go. I haven't done the um, preset potentiometers, so I'll do those with you. Anyway, first of all, the correct procedure. We've done the VCO, as I say. The first transmit coil to adjust is T two o seven. I'll just point them out with the yellow tool, and we'll just zoom in a bit. Two oh seven is that one. Remember, all these coils are sealed with wax. You need to pop your soldering iron very carefully into the top to melt that and turn them with the correct uh, trimming tool. And we use the uh, black phosphor bronze uh, one here. They're ever used screwdrivers because of the wedge shape that breaks the coils. And this set had been a, a failed, obviously a failed twenty eight meg conversion, and most of these coils have had to be replaced. Luckily, we had a scrap set to hand. So that's the first one, which is T207. The next one is T208. The next one is T209. The next is T301. Now, because we had this miles out of alignment and a lot of uh, problems with the the, the um, transmitter section, the, um, the PA, the driver, and the, and the output there, I was tuning these up. Perhaps absolutely, I do it for maximum current on the power supply. To be honest with you, because I was getting no signal, there's no output from this radio in the state it was in, and I thought, well, maximum current, and uh, and that that seemed to work. Obviously, you could use an RF probe and go onto the base of each transistor and 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 move it forwards with the the circuit diagram in front of you. So by the time I got to there, we started to transmit at 50 milliwatts. Now then. Your next one is T303, which is in there. We had to change the driver transistor on this, and we had to change all the resistors in the driver section. What's happened is the previous bodger has put a wrong transistor in, which is a more powerful one. And, of course, the radio, the radio can't source that kind of, um, of power that it needed, so it, it burnt out a lot of parts in, in both these sections. And although only two resistors were actually burned out, when I came to test most of the others, they were out of tolerance because of the heat it had generated. So that's what these people do. They turn, try and turn these things into a ham radio, try and coax seven watts out of them, and and, um, and it's soon uh, scrap material. Anyway, um, the next one is the T305 in that compartment, which is the, um, the output transistor there. And finally, it's T307. And that is it with the coil lineup. So it starts with T207, T208, T209, T301, T303, T305, and T307. Now, the transmit has to be set on frequencies. As I've explained before, there's a three crystal arrangement around this general purpose Motorola synthesizer. For a start, you've got the 10.24 uh, crystal there. And you need to make sure that is set to 10.24. And what we did was to put the um, frequency counter onto pin 3 of the synthesizer IC, which is the output of uh, the, the 10.24. And then we've adjusted the trimmer capacitor CT203 there to bring that to exactly 10.24. Because then you've got to set the right hand one of these two crystals, which is your transmit one, CT202, to the correct frequency, which in our case on channel 20 is 27 decimal 79125. Now you could get that wrong, and you could get that wrong, and you could make it read 279125, but then what would happen is you'd never get the receiver correct, and the IF would be um, lopsided, it'd be non sinusoidal in which case it would be really funny performance. So it's important to get that correct on 10.24 and then the transmitter says is trimmed to the correct frequency using the right hand one of these trimmers which is CT202 
for 2779125. I'll explain the receive setup on the next video when I cover the receiver. Now then, what do we need to do? We need to set the low power on this because being an MPT1320 set, it's equipped with a high low power switch. That 10 decibel attenuation brings the radio from 4 watts to 0.4 of a watt. So I'm going to switch to low power and we will now see what I can do with this. This was another thing, the, the transistor was burnt out on this part and the um, Zener diode was burnt out as well. So it's been a right faff. So this is RV301 and we're just going to set the low power now. And there we have it, that's his set for, you have to take my word for it because the other camera's got a fault on it so I can't uh, switch it through. Um, so that's now 0.4 of a watt in the low power position and I'm going to just switch back to high power and there we have 4 watts. Now the deviation, let's hope we've got some, where's my trusty oscillator? now try and do is set the deviation up and it's RV303 ah we have no deviation so I have to pause the video and fault find something else well thank goodness that problem wasn't too scary it was quite simply dirt on the uh, preset and I've uh, cleaned that using the we use a service oil spray here, uh, which is one I've used for 20 something years. No, 30 something years. Age creeps up. And um, that's now sorted. If, of course, that didn't cure it, we'd change the preset, which obviously we have in stock. Only about 15 pence, aren't they? So that's the deviation. We've done the low power. So now we need to set the transmit signal meter. And the, uh, on transmit, it is RV302, which is the right hand one. And so on the 4 watt setting, I need to adjust that so that it reads 4 watts on the front RF meter. In this case, it's the center of the red section. And that has set up easily and properly. So there we have it. The transmitter is now set up, it's doing 4 watts on normal power, it's doing 0.4 watts on the low power setting, we've set, and that was the low power remember was RV301, we've set the deviation using R303 to 2.5 kilohertz absolute maximum, and the right hand of those two trimmers is the power meter, so we've set that to the centre of the red section to indicate that's the normal output into a dummy load of course which is in, built into our test set so that concludes the transmitter setup and the next video will be the receive